from the Gnerd Corner Studio in Phoenix, Arizona. It's time for another episode of Staples Gnerd Corner. On tonight's show, we welcome special guest Aaron Schmalfeld from Hot Pepper Gaming. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our new episode. Welcome, listeners, to a brand new episode of J Pool's Gnerd Corner. Hi there, listeners. I'm your host, of course, J Pool, and tonight I'm joined by a special guest. Tonight, give it up for Aaron Schmalfell. <laughs> Hi. 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 Aaron. Hi. Uh, for who do not know you, and for the, their mouth is burning probably right now. Uh, <laughs> Or their ears, depending on <laughs> if they listen to this podcast. Uh, could you tell the listeners who you are and exactly what you do? Yeah, of course. Uh, my name is Erin Schmalfeld, and uh, with my friends Vernon Shaw and Jared Rosen, I help run a YouTube channel called Hot Pepper Gaming, where uh, us three and our friends come and eat really spicy peppers and then review video games. Um, and then I'm also just a... Uh, uh, content creator and writer for different YouTube stuff, mostly comedy. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, how did you get into the whole, you know, YouTube channels and uh, all the comedy entertainment business in general? Oh, sure. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to explain because I feel like I'm I'm part of this uh, this group of people who really grew up on the internet, and um, it was. I don't know. It's it's interesting because I've just always really been into the Internet. I was an early adopter of YouTube. Um, me and my best friend in college had Kelly's shoes memorized, and we, like, propagated it amongst our entire campus. But after I graduated from college, I got my degree in creative writing, and I graduated in the recession, so I moved back home from Northern California to Southern California, Um and I was doing a lot of part-time jobs at the time, but I ended up finding a Craigslist posting. This is the truth. Um, I found a Craigslist posting for a writer and humorist position for a startup um, in Los Angeles. And so I just decided to go for it. I really liked the vision. I had always loved YouTube, and I just believed in what it could be. So I went for it, and that started. That startup ended up being Maker Studios, and I was there for several years, and watched it grow and got to be a part of it and just really got involved in YouTube for, I guess, uh, professionally about four years now. So it's been a while, but I love it, and it's really fun. Nice. That that sounds fantastic. And you've got to uh, really build up your, your network of uh, people you've known in the uh, YouTube comedy entertainment industry as well. Yeah, I'm really lucky that I've gotten to work with so many amazing channels and creators and and beyond that also like just directors and PAs and people who do costumes like I think that the the people who are in the digital industry right now are really inspiring and I've loved getting to work with all of them even people beyond the the big names behind the channels now you said you you write uh, as well as like uh, comedy is that correct yeah I've done um I've done some sketch stuff before online. I, I've also written some different YouTube shows for different YouTubers. And um, recently I've moved into writing um, branded videos, so brand-sponsored content on YouTube. And it's just been really interesting to watch the industry grow and watch ad dollars move into YouTube. And there are a lot of people who want a piece of this but want to do it in a way that doesn't upset the community and I feel like I can sometimes be an ambassador for that and it's really cool. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Now have you ever done any stand-up yourself? <laughs> no, I have not. I'm actually really shy in person. Um, I used to do theater when I was growing up and loved performing but I would always get so nervous on stage I would end up hiccuping and you know, class presentations, I get so nervous, you know, I, I like putting myself out there, and I like trying, but I just think I would be too nervous to ever actually do stand-up. Well, what do you feel when you actually are in front of the camera and realizing that, you know, tens of thousands of people are going to be uh, seeing you later on, even though it's edited? 
Um, are you still nervous when you get in front of the camera now? Oh, yeah. I'm always so nervous. Um, really, I try not to think about it. When I think about the, the number of people who have watched the videos, I try to picture them all in a football stadium, but then I realize it would take a couple football stadiums. It would take many football stadiums. And that's kind of a terrifying thought for me. But when we're filming Hot Pepper Gaming, it's a really supportive room. It's just a bunch of friends who are there. We, we film in my apartment, and we have all of our guests come over throughout the afternoon or the evening. And it's kind of like a, a pepper party. So it ends up being a lot of fun, and it makes me way less nervous. Nice. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Now, uh, can you tell us a little bit more of uh, Hot Pepper Gaming and, you know, Ex exactly where do you actually shoot out of do you shoot out of a studio no no we sh we shoot in my apartment we shoot in my living room um it started out just by taping up some butcher paper on my wall this is a very lo-fi type of program that we do um but it we just did this one one afternoon on a whim and we just taped some butcher paper up on my wall and shot it with like somebody's old canon pixma um but now we just we put up the the backdrop that I got from a, a Russian fabric store in the middle of my living room, and it gets really hot, especially during the summertime. Um, so we're turning the AC on and off and the lights on and off. But um, everybody just kind of hangs out in my living room. We usually have about oh, probably like five to eight people in the in the room at a time, and it's. It's the people who have just done their Hot Pepper game review, the people who are about to go. It's it's this, like, group experience that you go through together. And everybody is just laughing the whole time. Everybody is standing there trying to hold in their laughter. And then when we stop rolling, then everybody just starts cracking up. It's a lot of fun. Our shoot days are a lot of fun. Nice, nice. Now, who's usually behind the camera? Is it you or... Uh, is it uh, one of the other guys? It's usually Vernon. Vernon usually frames things up, but we, we've we gotten it pretty much down now. So I usually do most of, like, the setup, and I'll, you know, tape up the pepper and the video game controller. Vernon will frame it up. And then it's just a matter of pressing record for audio and then for the camera. So really anybody can do it. We've even had some of our guests help us out sometimes. It's easy. Cool. Now... Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the first Hot Pepper Gaming and how that, you know, ended up? I mean, w did it end up the way you wanted it to, or did you like, want to change things later on? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think I said already the, the first one that we did, it was totally on a whim one Saturday afternoon. Um, and Vernon and I were hanging out, and he said, why don't we just do this thing today I was like well okay yeah sure let's just do it and so he had had this joke that he made on his Twitter about what if I start a YouTube channel where people review video games after eating hot peppers and I guess it was a pretty good tweet for him so we decided to just try it and I called Jared up Jared and I went to college together and he's just a funny guy he loves video games so I called him up and he came over and Jared did his, and it was amazing, <laughs> and it was so funny. Um, he did his completely, like, off the cuff. Um, he didn't have any notes or anything at all. Vernon and I, our first reviews on the channel, we actually tried to read, like, something that was completely scripted out because um, we thought it would be funny to try and be, you know, forcing your way through a script under the influence of a hot pepper, but it ended up being way funnier when Jared was just being himself. And so I think if I could change anything about those first reviews, it would just be for Vernon and I to have not read ours with such a firm script and to just have uh, focused more on the personality and the pepper. And But I don't know, the show's developed over time, and I think that's what's cool about YouTube is you can get that instant feedback from the commenters and see what works and what doesn't and just kind of like adjust your creative from there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now I've always wondered, do you, uh, do you guys go through the whole video game when you're reviewing it? Do you go from beginning to end and maybe even all the DLC stuff to go through your reviews to get the, you know, the points of the game. Sometimes there's just not time. Like if there's a new game that has come out, like for my GTA review, when I reviewed that game, I had probably played it, uh, I, I, was, I think about 70% through. So I wasn't completely done yet. But, um, 
but really like since our reviews are pretty surface level um usually it's more about like the gameplay and the interface and how the controls are there's just not too much time in a three minute video to really get into the depths of dlc and stuff and sometimes when there's dlc we want that to be a completely separate review so we can't always play the whole game sometimes we do and it's different for every person who comes on hot pepper gaming i can't speak for all of them but um yeah, I don't know. We we do we do our best with our time, but also we all have full time jobs, you know. Hot Pepper Gaming was kind of started to give us a reason to play more video games because we all like doing it. But sometimes, you know, with work and life and everything, uh, I don't know. You can prioritize other stuff. So Hot Pepper Gaming was sort of a reason for us to have fun and to make sure we still got to play games. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, what was your uh? earliest memory of a you know your first video game that you played when you were younger oh man that's a really good question um well i grew up on pcs uh, my dad awesome computer guy insanely smart and um some of the earliest games i ever played were like i played so much commander keen there were a couple different commander keen games i played um jill of the jungle i had a mario typing game that i really loved um and then my first console ever, I still remember, this is still like the best Christmas ever in my memory. Um, my brother and I came out Christmas morning and there was a PlayStation set up in front of a tiny little TV and we just freaked out. We were so excited and there was Spyro the Dragon there oh, and nice. Oh my god, I freaked out. Like I'm a I'm a huge dragon person. When I was a younger kid, I was like that girl who was way too into dragons. And so that game just like oh my gosh, it blew my mind. And then we also got this uh PlayStation 1. It was like a trial game CD that came with the first ever PlayStation, so you could yep. play like 5 minutes of 10 different games. I could probably still recite like basically from memory all of those 10 games. It was just like my brother and I must have played 5 minutes of Crash Bandicoot 200 times. It was so fun. Now, out of all the consoles that have come out, do you have a favorite uh, that you played or are still playing today? Well, I don't have a next gen console yet. I try and wait a little bit um because Usually there will be, like, some adjustments or corrections, like we were talking about installing new software earlier. Um, and also the price comes down, obviously. I have a PlayStation 3 right now, and I really like it a lot. Um, my parents got a PlayStation 3 because they thought it would bring them closer together. It's so cute. But um, I don't know. I also really love my Nintendo 3DS. Like, I love it. It's the best ever. I went to a laundromat on Sunday, and I was just so thankful that the 3ds exists yeah i go to a lot of uh comic conventions or just uh those oh my uh, sci- sci-fi the conventions street in general. Passes. <laughs> yeah well not just the street passes but you'll see groups of kids that pay what 50 60 dollars to get into these conventions and then they'll be in the hallways in groups and circles playing like pokemon or oh my gosh yeah that's so cool though that they can do it as a group activity i think that's pretty cool but um the like the main reason oh my gosh my some of my friends just talk all the time about like oh yeah like when i went to pax prime i got this many street passes and they like will rank conventions on the quality of the street passes um which i think is hilarious oh man hot pepper gaming went to a diablo 3 launch party this year which was insane i can't even believe we got invited to something like that but jared walked out and he pulled his DS out of his pocket, and we just started cracking up because he got so many street passes there. It was so funny. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. You got uh, in- invited to that party. I mean, oh my you, God. you guys have really made it. I mean, <laughs> and you're still going strong as well. It was the fanciest party I think I've ever been to. It was like in this old converted church, and they had so many tiny foods on sticks and there were people walking around in costumes and I got to meet the developers and it was crazy. It's been amazing to get to meet all the different people in the games industry thanks to Hot Pepper Gaming. Now, when you started out, I always ask people about, you know, their channels or, you know, their 
business when they started out. But yeah. when you started out, did you ever think that you'd get to this point where you'd be this popular and this well known over the internet? Oh my gosh! I, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. You know, all of us, uh, me, Jared, and Vernon, we had all been working in the YouTube industry before Hot Pepper Gaming really happened. So we were used to being around channels of a certain size, you know, and channels that are far bigger than Hot Pepper Gaming is now. And it's a privilege to work with those people, and crazy to think about their numbers. But I never thought that we would have a channel that would take off so well, just mostly because. We were all working all the time, and I I didn't think that we would have time to create something that could get this big. But um, but Hot Pepper Gaming was designed very thoughtfully so that you know we only have to film every like month and a half or every two months, and so even though we have these full time jobs, you know we still found a way to create a project, and I think that's so cool. I love that like you know. I love that my mom could have her day job, but she could start a YouTube channel at nighttime, and it could be something that totally fulfills her. I think that's so awesome. Yeah, we we live in an awesome age. Yeah, it's very cool. I love digital media because I feel like it puts a little bit of power back into the hands of the individual, and if you're really passionate about an idea, you can make it, and you have the ability to distribute it now. It used to be that, you know, if you had an idea, you had to go, you know, come to Los Angeles and pitch it to an executive and hope you get lucky, and you probably need an agent and a manager, but now there's just so much more freedom, and we all carry video cameras around in our pockets all day, every day. It just feels like such an awesome age to be a creative person. Exactly, and I know there's a lot of people saying that there's those 15-minute fame people that have come out of the woodwork of YouTube. Um, I was watching this thing the other day, this documentary about YouTube, and saying, you know, one of the early people, even though it wasn't that long ago, that really showed that, you know, you could be like an, almost a nobody and then become somebody the next day was uh, Rebecca Black for Friday. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, like, I don't know, I have... Uh, I have people, you know, my coworkers have worked very closely with Rebecca Black and have made videos with her, and she's, like, a very amazing, pleasant, and talented person. So, I don't know, I just think, like, she's a great example of, like, even if you don't get an ideal start, like, you can still change the conversation, too, just by being, you know, persistent and creative and by being optimistic and just trying over and over again. Exactly. Exactly. Now, on to the peppers. Uh, what, do you get these donated or do oh my you purchase gosh. them yourself? And where do you get them? Well, peppers. Um, okay. Well, I, I knew, obviously knew nothing about peppers before we really started this channel. I knew that they were spicy. I knew that we could get something funny out of them. But um, I had no idea about the agricultural, I don't know, reasons behind having such a uh, limited selection of peppers in the market. You know, we can only really get jalapenos, serrano chilies, Thai chilies, and habaneros at the supermarket. So if we're trying to get more exotic peppers, it's really difficult because places also won't sell them fresh online. They'll sell you seeds, and I have long-term dreams of starting up a a really elaborate pepper garden, but it's just not in the cards right now. So um, our editor's uncle gave us some peppers that he grew himself. I still have some in my freezer. Um, Vernon ended up in a warehouse in Echo Park where a friend of a friend grew peppers, and it was basically like a drug deal, but with peppers. Like he ended up in this warehouse they cut him a sliver of the pepper so he could test the product. Like, it was all very weird, but the peppers were great. So everything works awesome. out. That would be awesome if they were being uh, – uh, had surveillance on them and the cops busted the door down like, oh what, my are you, God. what are you buying? Uh, <laughs> peppers, sir. These aren't actual drugs. <laughs> <laughs> they just drop a handful of peppers onto the ground. Oh, my gosh. That would be so funny. Then what's that white stuff on your lips? That's not. This pepper is <laughs> really milk. hot. I swear it's milk. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so I I noticed that um, at the some of the earlier reviews you you gave milk and bread and sometimes even Pepto Bismol. Yeah, yeah. I mean we're we're still experimenting and we hear things from 
uh, people in the comments all the time about stuff to defeat the pepper. Um, and really, like, uh, you don't want to drink too much milk because if you have two huge glasses of milk and you're gulping it down, and we use whole milk because it's really the fat that helps disperse the capsaicin. Yep. Um, but if you're having two huge glasses of whole milk, that's going to give you a worse tummy ache than the pepper will. So, like, we had somebody at our last shoot who was lactose intolerant. So, and it was also a huge heat wave in Los Angeles. So we got some popsicles and we got some lactose free milk. And, um, we've also heard bananas really help. We all, every, we hand out Tums after every shoot. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things that will help beat the pepper, but really nothing beats the milk. Everything else we've tried is just supplementary to the milk. Exactly. Now, you, I've been uh, reading a lot of the comments. Um, I've seen every single video on the channel, and uh, I've read a lot of the comments, and a lot of people refer, you, uh, refer to you as the champ of Hot Pepper Gaming. <laughs> I don't know how I became the champ. I think it's just in my first Habanero review. Um, I think in the Pepper Facts, I was listed as a champ. And somehow it's just, it's never gone away. But you know what? I will take it. If I can be a pepper champ, then there are worse things to have on your tombstone. Exactly. I, well, you took it, you took the uh, habanero and the ghost pepper better than Eagle Raptor did. Eagle Raptor did. Well, I gotta be fair. You know, I had a dried ghost pepper, and my understanding is that that has nothing on a fresh ghost pepper. So I did have a dried one, and it was still really spicy, and I added hot sauce onto it, but I still have not conquered the fresh ghost pepper. And Aaron, def other Aaron, Ego Raptor Aaron, he definitely has. So maybe someday, I don't know. I, I still, um, the first video, actually, I, I uh, was introduced to Hot Pepper Gaming was uh, Mortimer and oh, her review of, a, oh, of no. a, was it, a, a Donkey Kong. Yeah. And, and I just, I'm like, my friend showed me this to me, and I'm like, okay, what is this? And I'm watching it, and she keeps repeating, like, you can play as Cranky Kong and yeah. Cranky Kong. And I'm like, well, this is really funny because she's she's suffering through this whole thing it's almost like watching a train wreck yeah oh my gosh i felt so bad when Susie went i mean on one hand it was really fun because her and aaron were over at my apartment and i love hanging out with them and it was so fun to get to see them but also i felt horrible because we made them eat these peppers and it was so bad but afterwards we all went out for ice cream so that was pretty fun but yeah i mean Susie, if i am a champ Susie is also a champ exactly now uh, i believe um andrew wk is the only one who's eaten a scorpion pepper is that correct yes andrew wk ate a scorpion pepper and that oh man i mean Props to the editor for making that video amazing because really what happened was he ate that pepper and he just sat there in silence for a really long time and everybody was looking around the room and really worried that he was not okay. Um, and I, I think it's in the video, but he refused the milk because he just wanted to ride the endorphin high. It was like a very surreal hot pepper gaming filming experience, but... He made friends with my cat Abby, so I don't know. I think I think it all ended up being okay. But he texted Vernon the next day that he had a good time and that he was still paying the price. So Wow, it probably is like there's <laughs> fire coming out of my ass. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it was so amazing to have him on the show. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that Andrew WK has been in my apartment. That's it's just pretty mind blowing. <laughs> That's yeah, that's awesome. I was feeling bad for him because he was like really quiet, and then they kept having to fast forward through the thing because he's just sitting there rocking back and forth. Yeah, and it was like... so strange. I mean, he is such an articulate and like jovial person, very funny, like very warm and pleasant, and just one of the most polite human beings I've ever interacted with. And so then when he ate the pepper and he he got so quiet. I was just, I was worried about him, but I don't know. He took it and 
we have, oh, well, I guess our last shoot, Vernon ate a pepper called a seven pod Dougla. This is a little sneak peek for you. Vernon ate a pepper called a seven pod Dougla, which is supposed to be like, I think, like in that same Scoville range. And Vernon took it like a boss. Like, wow. It was crazy. So that'll be a good one to go up. Vernon is really the person who can eat the, eat the peppers the best out of all of us, I feel like. Yeah, that was, I love watching his. Uh, I love watching him squirm on, on the YouTube channel. Ah, I know it's so funny. I, I I keep saying that I think peppers bring out who you really are, and you know, like Jared gets all like weird and funny and kooky, and I just get like really like sad but also happy and Vernon, sometimes angry. Yeah, sometimes sometimes I get a, I feel a little anger, you know, if the game hasn't done right by me. But Vernon just is like pretty buttoned up. Like he will squirm under pressure, but he really like he stays strong. Nice. Now, uh, one of my other friends uh, was recently on Hot Pepper Gaming, and he's also a voice actor, Matthew Mercer. Oh, yeah. That and was he, such a yeah. fun day. And he, uh, you know, he's voiced Leon Kennedy. He voiced uh, Human Voice in Destiny recently. And he does uh, Levi on Attack on Titan in the English dub. And he just ate a ghost pepper, and wow, he took it like a champ as well. Dude, was... he crushed it. We were in shock because he came in right away. He walked in my front door, and he was like, I don't do spicy. I can barely handle jalapenos. Like, I've never eaten a whole pepper. I'm worried about this. But he was very adamant that he wanted to go full-on ghost pepper. Like, he was up for the challenge. And he just handled for a guy who said he was not into spicy. Like, we were all blown away. Nice. Now, if you were to ever, you know, pick a voice actor to come on to Hot Pepper Gaming, like one of your dream uh, get voice actor oh guests, gosh. who would you choose? Well, hmm. I don't know if this will be an answer that satisfies many people, but I would totally ask Adina Menzel, Broadway actress, songstress. She um, She's done a bunch of different voice acting stuff, um, but... I guess most notably Frozen, which is kind of a bummer because so many other things she's done are so much more notable in my opinion. But I would love to have her over in my apartment and I would love to make her sing after eating a hot pepper. I think that would be really wonderful. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I heard, I think it was, uh, what, was it uh, Vernon who said he wanted uh, Don, Dante uh, Oh my Basco? gosh, yes, Dante Basco. I think it's going to happen. I think, like, Rufio is going to come to my apartment, which is crazy. Oh, my well, gosh. Well, I, next month he's actually coming to a convention uh, uh, in the, the city right next to me, uh, Mesa, here in Arizona. Oh, and awesome. So, so I'm actually, that's one of my questions is I'm going to ask him. <gasps> yes, awesome. We've We've been in touch with him, and, you know, he is totally down. It's just a matter of scheduling. But, you know, a little peer pressure never hurt anybody. <laughs> Exactly. Especially if I can get him on an interview and kind of, you know, nudge him into it going, you need to try it out. Yeah, get it on get it on the official public record. <laughs> then we'll do Rufio Pepper Gaming. <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't that be awesome if you got, like, um, Mark Hamill to come on there? That would do... be – who else would I really like? I really, really – I said it on our Q&A, but I really want Action Bronson to come do a Hot Pepper Gaming because – his reactions to everything are so hilarious, and, you know, he enjoys fine food. So let's just swing the complete opposite direction and have him eat a not-so-fine ingredient of food. <laughs> exactly. Or maybe somebody like uh, the angry video game nerd. Yeah. I would also like to see girls on Hot Pepper Gaming. I love when girls come on the show. I feel like we've got a high pain threshold, so that would be awesome. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the women have held out a lot better than a lot of the guys. Yeah, dude, I don't know what it is, but like girl power all the way, it extends to the hot pepper universe. There are some really standout guys in there, but I feel like in general as a group, the ladies have handled it better than the men. But we also haven't had as many ladies as men on the show. So for this to be a proper scientific experiment, we need to eliminate some variables and even things out. Exactly, and invite more women because it, you know I showed my uh, my parents Hot Pepper Gaming. They actually really enjoyed it. Oh, awesome! And 
uh, they and my my mom especially uh, wanted to see more women on the uh, channel as well. You know, exp- uh, review the games and experience yeah. all the hot peppers. Yeah, it's so fun, and I think like men and women react to pain in such different ways. I mean, everybody everybody has a different reaction to pain, but oh my gosh, like we did an we did a hot pepper game review with Megan Tonjes this last. Um, this last shoot day and she was just hysterical like i don't know it's just it's so much fun to have ladies come to hpg i love it nice now um before i go on to ask you you know what what were your you know favorite reviews that you've done i need to ask you because i just watched this tonight which apparently went up yes yesterday Mm -hmm. the uh the title of the video on Hot Pepper Gaming is called The Weirdest Destiny Review Ever. Oh, my gosh, yes, Jared. <laughs> yeah, he freaked out. I mean, we've had these Szechuan peppers. We actually went through the the YouTube Space certification program, and when we did that, we met another channel there called Reckless Eating, and um, they gifted us with these Szechuan peppers, which supposedly make your entire face numb. I've never tried them, but... Vernon has and our editor has, and they insisted that it would be a weird experience. And Jared, I guess, got some requests from people who follow him on Twitter that wanted to see him do the Szechuan peppers. And we had sort of been holding off on them for a while because we thought, well, you know, this isn't a spicy pepper. Like, it's a weird numbing pepper, and probably there's just going to be a lot of saliva, and I'm not sure if people are really here to see things that aren't spicy. So we held off for a while, but because Jared got those requests, we decided, what the hell, let's just do it. And uh, what followed was a series of strange events. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess he kept saying he was, like, having an acid flashback, which I wouldn't put past Jared because he has been known to party. But, um, yeah, there was a lot of spitting. I don't know. You saw it. It was pretty gross. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I, I've seen my friends get high in front of me, and that's what it looked like. There were some YouTubers going, is that real? Is he really reacting to the pepper that way? Yeah, it was very, very bizarre. And, like, we fast-forwarded through all of his spitting, but I, I almost wish that we didn't have to. We had to for time's sake, of course. Um But I almost wish that we didn't have to because I feel like you could kind of see it build and it definitely made it a little more real. But yeah, he, he freaked out. I don't know. It was, it was a strange thing. Now, what was the whole thing about wearing the, the wolf hoodie? I mean, because it just made him look like he was eating out, a wolf was eating out of a bowl. I know. Oh my gosh. I, I'm surprised that nobody could hear the laughter on the final video because me and Vernon and Megan were just cracking up out on the other side of the room, just laughing because it looked like a bowl was like, or a wolf was like eating oatmeal out of a bowl. But, um, I, yeah, I don't know. It was the middle of it was the middle of the hottest heat wave that we've had all year. And Jerry just walks in my front door wearing this enormous wolf hoodie and like it's it's covered in fur. He has it has to be 120 degrees inside of this coat. But Jared has always been a person who is a snappy dresser and Jared will wear a captain's suit to a lecture hall and my mom loves Jared and Jared always had this pair of green party pants that he would wear when he visited my parents house so it ended up being that my mom would request that Jared always wear his green party pants like he's just a dude who likes weird clothes and so I was surprised when he walked in the door wearing that wolf outfit but also completely not surprised <laughs> nice all right so we're on to your favorite reviews that you've done on Hot Pepper Gaming because you've done quite a few and probably are going to be doing some more in the future. So my next review that goes up is The Sims 4, which I have been playing compulsively, even though it didn't live up to my standards. Um, But I think that my favorite review, mm, well, I, I loved the one that I did for GTA because Vernon's cat, Michael stole my milk. Um, and it was just waiting there right off camera. And this was a this shoot day was kind of a weird one because we weren't having a bunch of guests over, but we wanted to get a GTA review up like pretty quickly after the game came out. 
So we were doing a pickup shoot, and um, so it was just me and Vernon and Jared, and the three of us are in that room, and the milk is just off camera, and they both started just, like, laughing and freaking out when Michael stole the milk, but I was so bummed out in that moment. Oh, my gosh, just true and pure sadness at that cat drinking that milk, but I couldn't stay mad because she was just so cute, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I loved that he got to share a little bit of screen time with such an adorable little animal. Um Exactly. I mean, you you look like you really enjoyed the game, but then you started hitting the table and you started getting mad. Yeah, I was it, <laughs> I was so genuinely mad at that cat and it just really like I loved the game. I loved GTA. Like I still love playing GTA, but Oh my gosh, I was so beyond mad at that cat. And the truth of the matter is, is that, like I said, it was this pickup shoot day, so we didn't have, like, gallons and gallons of milk like we usually have on hand. We just had that one glass of milk. So the cat drank it, and Vernon had to, like, run out to 7-Eleven to get another thing of milk so that I could have it. So I had to just, like, wait. Oh my gosh, it was... I was so angry. <laughs> Because, yeah, you look like you're still, uh, like, within the next clip, you know, you're holding the cat. It looks like your your face is, is, the tears are still there, and you're still oh sweating. God. Yeah, that was a really gross pepper. That pepper was a scotch bonnet. Yeah. And actually, the week before that, I went to the farmer's market a block from my place, and there was a Jamaican food cart there. And I knew that Jamaican food uses scotch bonnet peppers. And so I asked them, I was like, oh, do you guys know where I can get some scotch bonnets? And they were like, oh, man, we have a half of a one right here. But if you come back next week, we'll totally bring you as many as you want. So they gave me the scotch bonnet peppers, these amazing, amazing, cool Jamaican chef people. Um, and the scotch bonnet pepper is nicknamed the goat pepper, which I I didn't know until right before I ate it because it just smells so gross. It smells like wet trash. And the pepper had been frozen. So when I bit into it, it was just kind of like soft and mushy, but also like full of spicy water. And it just smelled like wet garbage. It was so in extremely unpleasant. That is like one of the nastiest things I've ever had to eat, probably. Nice, nice. Now, do you happen do you read almost all the comments on every single one of your reviews? Um, no, I try. I don't know. I try not to. It can be hard to resist, but um, I don't know. O over time, like sometimes I'll read all of them, and I think over time and working in YouTube for a couple years, like I've learned to just be able to ignore negative comments and ignore weird comments. But, um, I don't know, sometimes if you're not in the right mindset to be reading the comments, you really need to, like, know yourself and know how you will react to, I don't know, the, the kind of attention, both positive and negative, that you can get. And if it's not a good day to read the comments, then just put it off till another day. Exactly. Yeah, you do get quite a quite a few marriage proposals though by some people <laughs> well i don't know that's that's definitely a weird thing but um i figure there are worse things that they could be saying like at least you know these kind young gentlemen are interested in long-term commitment rather than something really disgusting but i don't know it's a little bit weird they don't they don't really they don't know me and um, and I don't know them, and it's it's sweet, but I think also people need to start being more accountable for the things that you say online. Like, obviously, a marriage proposal, a fake marriage proposal is not a big deal, but I think, like, under the guise of anonymity, people can say some really weird, offensive things on the Internet. And, oh, yeah. And I think we have to start getting away from that because... Just because you have an internet connection doesn't give you the right to say whatever you want. Exactly. Exactly. I, I have a, a friend, uh, her name is Jessica Negri, and you go on her page and, wow, the trolls come out to play. <laughs> yeah, it's really, I don't know, it's really a bummer. And, like, ultimately, I mean, I know, like, Hot Pepper Gaming is such a huge joke, and 
we designed it that way. But also, like, I do want to try and give a good video game review. And I think that everybody wants to be judged on the merit of their content and their opinion and the observations that they can draw, not on, like, you know, the shininess of their hair. Although it is always nice to be told that your hair is shiny. Just that's not the only interesting thing about you. Exactly. Exactly. Now... Uh, you know, I want to I know you a little more in the sense of, like, what are your interests, like, outside of Hot Pepper Gaming? Do you, like, watch television or go to the movies? And what type of, you know, what's your favorite movies or television shows out there? Um, well, gosh, I mean, we are in a wonderful age of television. Um, I don't know. Many many of the shows that I really love are off the air. But, um, like, I loved Breaking Bad, of course. I'm a really big Mad Men fan. And especially now that I'm, you know, starting to veer into digital advertising and stuff, I feel like, you know, there's a new era of, like, Mad Men of the Internet. So I love rewatching that show and thinking about, like, oh, man, what would, like, Internet Don Draper be like? Um, but beyond that, I also love reading books. I love doing art. I love painting and drawing and sewing and making stuff. Um, I love my cats. I love gardening. I wish I had the ability to have a garden right now. Then also I just really love digital media like beyond, you know, gaming and also YouTube, just like the way that the industry is changing and the way viewers are shifting from television to digital platforms and how the way that we all consume content is changing. Like I love thinking about that stuff and talking to people about it all the time. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now, what what are your, you know, what do you want to do in the future with Hot Pepper Gaming? Do you want to get your own, guys, do you want to get your own studio and make this, like, a, a full-time paid job? Or is oh, this just something like a hobby that you guys are just doing for fun? I don't know. I mean, I think that because there's three of us, um, we all have different goals from it. And right now, for me, I love doing Hot Pepper Gaming on the side. I, I love my career in digital media. I don't want to stop doing that. Um, but I don't know. Maybe maybe one of the guys would want to eventually go full time. But um, I know that we want to be uploading more and we want to introduce more formats and that if we really want to keep growing, we're going to have to be doing more. Um, so I don't know if a, if a studio will be in the works, but I think the overall purpose of Hot Pepper Gaming was just to give us a – like I said, a reason to play games, a reason to get together with our friends, and a way to meet new people in the gaming industry and the digital media industry. So I feel like we're really accomplishing those goals right now, and I'm not sure what comes next, but I, I always want to be a part of it. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so we're getting uh, to the end of our interview. And for fans that want to follow you online, do you have uh, a Twitter or a a uh, Facebook fan page or Oh, I mean, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to. My handle is at @ishmolf. Um that's really only if you like jokes about, you know, being an internet person and if you like pictures of cats and stuff, but um but yeah, I would love to have you. I like telling jokes, like writing little jokes. Um but then other than that, just find me on Hot Pepper Gaming, youtube.com slash Hot Pepper Gaming. We upload new reviews every Monday, and then sometimes we have additional videos called Fire Sales that come out usually on Thursdays. And we're looking in the next couple of months to add a new format called Hot Pepper Versus, which is two gamers and two peppers playing a versus video game, and the winner gets the milk. So that's going to be something fun to look out for in the coming months. Nice. Yeah. Now, will the fans be able to, you know, see you guys anytime soon at a, you know, a video game convention or a convention in general? Oh, that's a good question. I know that we want to be going to more conventions. It can be hard because we all work full time. Um, but usually we're pretty good about announcing that stuff on Twitter. And you can also follow Hot Pepper Gaming on Twitter. It's just Hot Pepper Gaming for dumb Twitter jokes. But also that's a place more for us to, like, communicate with people about what our plans are and what's coming up on the channel and so all of that is there nice well uh thank you aaron for being on tonight's episode oh, of thanks so much. Corner. it was lovely to talk to you this evening you too and uh, i enjoyed uh, talking to you i enjoy watching your videos and uh, thank you for giving us 
uh, this awesome channel where I constantly share your videos. <laughs> and I know my friends share over and over again. Say, hey, look at this awesome video on this person eating the peppers. Um, oh, that's but, awesome. I'm so glad you guys like it. Oh, me, yes. me, Jared, and Vernon, we're all like goofy class clown types. So we just like making people laugh. And it's awesome to get to do that. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for uh, being on tonight. I know I have some friends that have been uh, constantly telling me, when is the interview going to be? And I'm like, I love, we'll be doing it soon, so oh, stop my asking. Oh, goodness. Well, I <laughs> hope I could stand up to the test. All right. And uh, you can find us on uh, YouTube, uh, Gnerd Corner, of course, and uh, J Pool's Gnerd Corner on uh, Facebook as well, also Gnerd Corner on Twitter. And thank you, listeners, and thank you once again, Aaron, for being on tonight. Thank you. All right. And have a good night, everyone.